Oh, there it went. Kind of jumping around. It needs to kick on a little sooner. When it does kick on, it jumps up to like six amps. Okay, there it goes. I saw seven amps. Oh man, it's so gusty outside. There we go. Well, it looks like we finally got a little wind. I had to wait a week. But uh, there she is. It was just like I suspected earlier. The geometry is off a little bit, so it's having to blow a lot harder than I'd like before that thing actually kicks in. Like, it's not kicked in right now. And now it's kicked in. Now it's not. So it's just kind of bouncing right on that edge now it's kicked in you can almost hear it i know you can't see it here's making a racket all right kicked in up oh. i can see it probably hard to see it with the camera oh but you can see the tower bowing sure you can see that well not right now anyways wait it'll probably fly off and hit me in the head. there it goes it's closed it's closed uh, it's closed it's bouncing ever so slightly it's closed it's still closed hard to appreciate how violent that thing is at this point. Oh god, if that thing ever came down, it'd freaking that whirly gig would chop my head off. Get the hell out of here. Shit. It uh, suddenly occurred to me that that tower is uh, nowhere sufficient. But, yeah, I don't know, we probably have gusts of 30 miles an hour, I would say. Pretty steady at 20. So if I'm getting 10 amps off of that thing, it's probably 10 amps times 24. Um, you know, that's 250 amps. Or, excuse me, 250 watts. So, I'm sure it's spiking a little higher than that, but it's kind of hard to read it with that meter, because that turbines hitting and missing and so it's just kind of jumping up and down like I said in a previous video it'd be nice if that um, if it had that hinge was down lower so the leverage it had greater leverage it would it would push that back sooner so anyways I just wanted to talk a minute about the physics of wind turbines um, all this information is pretty easy to Google um, one of the things that I think is a travesty is how, how there are so many people advertising these low wind generators and I have no doubt they can generate power with low wind but the props on them are so small that there's hardly anything available you know, if you look at the wind turbine charts for a five foot blade like I have on the one on, on the alternator that I just got through building, yeah, you'll, on the charts, it shows that in a 20 mile an hour wind, you have about 250 watts available. And uh, it's because of how wind is measured. It's measured by the cube by the um, by the cubic meter and so the higher the velocity the more energy is available in that cube of wind and there's only so much available and no more and so the notion that you can get like all this power out of like a small wind generator at low wind is really kind of ridiculous 
um, because there's the power is not there. So at 250 watts, see every time the velocity of wind doubles, the kinetic energy um, goes up by a factor of eight. And that's true with any kind of kinetic energy. Um, if, you're, if you ever study the ballistics of a bullet, um, the same exact phenomenon is true. Every time the velocity doubles, the kinetic energy goes up by eight, by a factor of eight. So if you take a 20 mile an hour wind and you half that, you have 10 miles an hour, but you've reduced the power by a factor of eight. And I don't know, what is that? Um, but factor of four would be like 75 watts. And then you half that and then you got 30 some watts and you half that again and you got 15 watts. 15 watts available in a 10 mile an hour wind. I mean, what is that really? You know, that that's not even gonna make my batteries register. That My batteries won't even know there's a 15 watt charge on it. Like, um, if you have a tiny little battery, you might see the voltage go up a, a little. But I mean, quite honestly, you're not even gonna start making power until the 15 mile an hour range. And that's why I think the car alternator is perfect for it. Many have said it's not. And it just, the math never made sense to me in my head because you know, okay, so the field current, the field current is going to take about 50 watts of power of energy. Now, obviously, if it's blowing 10 miles an hour, you're not going to get, you know, I mean, if you close those contacts, you're, you're robbing yourself of 40 watts right there off, right off the top. And uh, so that's a deficiency. But by the time it gets to 18 miles an hour, which is really, you know, the wind velocity that you're going for with a small wind generator anyways, uh, because that's, I mean, if you're going to spend all that money on a wind generator and you only have 10 mile an hour winds, you're just better off spending your money on solar panels instead, quite honestly. I mean, um, but so, so with a, a consumption of 50 watts, to energize the field coil, um, you know, at 20 mile an hour winds, you have a gross of 250 watts that gives you um, a net of 200 watts minus the 50 watts for the field current. As soon as that goes up a couple miles an hour, the, the increase in power is tremendous. You get a 30 mile an hour gust and suddenly you went from making 200 watts, now you're making 400 watts. And that alternator is essentially limitless. It, in I mean, it has, it can create more power than your wind generator can create. I mean, to a point. I mean, I've actually burned up statters and those things um, in really high winds. But, I mean, there has to be some kind of a limiting device on your wind generator as well. Um, in some future videos, I'll show you, we're going to be building um, some blades that can actually feather um, in high winds. Um, that's my preferred method of doing it. I don't like the tail furling, um, w especially with two bladed props because the whole wind generator has to spin around and with two bladed props, you get a lot of chatter. Um, and another thing to note is the wind generator blades. You know, you can't have an efficient wind generator with you know, four or six or eight blades. Three is three should be the maximum, and um, and it it's considered the best number because it allows the turbine to turn freely without the chatter. I like the two blades because they spin much faster, and for the purpose for what I do with them on these smaller generators, um, it, uh, it it gives me what I want. It gives me usable power. I, I just the three blades don't quite spin fast enough to kick off a, an alternator, especially one without a modified coil. I mean, we can, if we wanted to make a low wind wind generator, I suppose we could put a larger blade on it and, um, and rewind the statter to kick in at a much lower RPM. Um, because remember the longer the blade, the lower the RPM, um, but more power available overall um, especially at lower wind so 
for a low wind turbine, my recommendation is use a bigger wind generator that has more power available to it. If you double the size of a wind generator, you you more than double the capacity of, of the power that it, that's available. And, um, you know, so take that into consideration. So about the blades, the blades should be, in my opinion, hand carved. I've had the best results with hand carved blades. I didn't invent a particular airfoil that's just super awesome. I just actually, I just try to copy the Clark Y airfoil. And in a future video, we'll be making a wind generator blade um, that I use specifically for car alternators. And um, I'll be showing you how to carve those. They're just a two bladed prop. I mean, look at the, look at the physics. I mean, what, what do the big wind generators use? I mean, that's what you need to be looking at. They don't use eight rotors on the, for a wind generator because it's not efficient. Each rotor makes a certain amount of turbulence. And so as it's spinning, the blade behind, they're all essentially behind one another, um, but they create turbulence for the one behind it, each blade. And, and so the more blades you have, the closer that turbulence is and the less efficient overall they become. It's kind of counterintuitive because you think you're catching more wind with more blades, but it's, that's, not the, that's not the case. That's not how the physics work. Um, you have to appreciate what these look like in a wind tunnel when they're wound up at full speed, and you can sort of see how all that works. And that's why these low wind generators are just retarded because they, they take the high wind capability and throw it out the door with these multi rotors. I know what they're doing. They're putting permanent magnets in an alternator, which in essence then creates all this uh, cogging and internal hysteresis in the alternator itself. And there's a ton of resistance to try and turn it. You, you can't turn them the shaft by hand. You have to put something on it to turn it. They're very difficult to turn. And so then to overcome that problem, they just put a whole bunch of blades on it. Um, and that gives it enough torque, startup torque, to start turning. And they call that, they market it cleverly as a low wind generator, which, yeah, it starts spinning in low wind, but then it'll quickly drop off as soon as you get into your power band. The amount of wind that'll actually give you some serious power. You know, I guess my advice to anybody is if you don't have the wind, then go with solar. Uh, go with water. You have the basically the three options. You know, you have uh, solar, wind, and water. And anyways, I want to thank you for watching my video. And um, if you like this sort of content, feel free to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll try to answer them um, the best I can. Thank you very much.